and welcome to another show of the army. <laughs> What's up, Kingsman? Um, as you heard, uh, my son, this is another show of the army. So this is another 4v4 Napoleonic Total War 3 battle. This will be a clan battle between the Napoleonics and the um, PL, I believe. Um, so like I said, 4v4, I believe it's a Portuguese map. So on the coalition side, you have a 9-point UK-Portugal. I believe there's two of them, one of them being a UK-Netherlands, one of them being UK-Portugal. 9-point uh, Espana, and then um, I believe... Actually, no, wait, I correct myself. It is two 9-point UK-Netherlands, one Portugal, and then one Spain. And it looks like already having a clash here. Some French Dragoons clashing with Light Dragoons from the UK. So already getting some cab dominance. Now, the fun thing about this battle is going to be the cav play. There's going to be a lot of really good quality cavalry that the UK are going to bring. And, of course, meeting that up with the French. This should make for a very awesome fight here. Um, now, I did do believe... Wow, the French had a huge break here. They lost a lot, although both sides seem to have exchanged out. These Light Dragoons are kind of getting out of here because the French definitely are kind of chasing down with some of their cavalry. Um, the French, now I say the UK did bring one of the iconic cav units. So we have the Scots Greys on the field. Uh, these guys, very strong, very high morale. I believe they have Inspire. Um, you even have more of the Dragoons. Now, like I said, that is going to prove to be very, very... Wow, we have some Portuguese cav. They're probably going to break, actually. It's a small unit. Um, maybe they'll mutually break. But you see more French cavalry rolling over here. Both sides um, very content to throw a lot of cav at each other. Uh, the French definitely seem to take the first win in this initial cav engagement. Now you have... What is this? Two Scots Greys? Oh my gosh. They brought two Scots Greys on the field. That is just going to be madness. The French are going to have to watch out for that. But like I said, the French definitely have a lot of cavalry. Now, Spain is advancing on one flank all by themselves with the rest of the entire UK army pushing on this other side. So Spain may end up being that flanking force here. And looking at the strengths and weaknesses, mostly just regular UK troops, guys. So really good shooting, really good reload skill. They can take some melee. Now, I do believe there's some... Nassau um, infantry mixed in here, but not a ton of it. Ooh, look at these guys. All black uniforms. I love it. And then, of course, some light infantry. Oh, they got the sappers, the nice looking sappers. Some light infantry that have some really good stats. Even some black watch. It's just a lot of really good, really good units here. Um, uh, not a lot of artillery I'm seeing, not a ton. Maybe just enough to be defensive. And uh, we have this first UK army pushing up to this LOC. We'll see if they can actually manage to take it, as that would definitely throw back the French um, defense or attack, making them have to attack. But it does look like the French may be actually very close to this LOC already. They have a general sitting right here. Oh, I didn't go over the French armies. So on the French side, you have a France 11-point Alamein, a 9-point France Flanders, 7-point Russia Sud, and a 9-point France Rhine. So here, the Rhine's going to bring a lot of chunky troops. Um, the 11-pointer depends, I guess, what kind of build. The same with the 7-pointer. Flanders has some really good Grenadiers, so I'm very excited to see, uh, you know. Oh, and also a lot of Crossiers they can bring. I'm curious if they did bring them. And it does, I wouldn't be surprised if... Uh, we see an Imperial Guard build, just because I've already seen this iconic Imperial Guard Chasseur Cheval. Very, very high on the uh, stats here. Now, the nice thing for the UK is as they push up, they got squares everywhere. Now, France is going to form up cab charges just to try to take them out and stop them from getting to the LOC. So they're going to probably sacrifice some cavalry here. Obviously, though, not going to work out very well in their favor. Um, they're just going to get hit pretty hard here. And France is going to probably not be able to make a significant push to get into this LOC. Now, probably going to go for this uh, this unit here again as they're pushing. I guarantee you they're going to charge in these Dragoons. 
They gotta stop him getting this LOC, guys. Oh, they stop him. Now, Spain is advancing on the flank, so France is gonna have to watch out for that pretty quickly here. Um, the rest of the UK is still rolling in. Oh, the Scots Grays are gonna be going in for a cab charge. Look at these guys go. Clashing with Dragoons. There's no doubt Scots Grays are gonna win. Hands down, decisive win here. Yeah, they break him almost immediately, only taking four losses. Now, ooh, looks like some of that infantry did break. And uh, some French, oh my goodness, France. They are sacrificing everything to get into LOC. Let's see if they can do it. They're rushing forward some Grenadiers. They're rushing forward a lot of their best troops here. Oh, they got into the LLC first. We got some Scots Grays going in. Oh my goodness, the fighting for this house is fierce, and they get it first. They get it first. Oh my goodness. Actually, the Scots Grays may break here. Oh no, they're not going to. Still, the fighting raging all around this LLC. The Scots Grays taking a huge fight here to try to get in here. France trying to push forward. They're trying to take the LLC. The UK don't want to back down either. Spain is descending upon this flank. So this fight is going to be heavily contested already as the French have formed up. They're going to start throwing forces in for melee. And uh, who knows what's truly going to happen here. This is going to become a mess. More French cavalry over here trying to run down some UK troops that maybe didn't get into melee or get into square. More cav. Actually, surprisingly, the UK. I mean, they've already lost one of their their uh, Scots Grays. The other one's sitting over here on this other flank. We have the French descending in mass on the flank here. Very concerning for the UK. That's a lot of grenadiers. That's some uh, grenadier columns. So the UK are going to start retreating here. Now it's really a question if the UK can hold this LOC, then things probably are going to turn out okay for them but right now it's still up in the air as to who's gonna win this one um, the cavalry infantry like I said pulling back they don't want to get too close and get into melee uh, with the French France actually starting to throw four more troops okay we got Ledoux okay here's the rest of the Imperial Guard cavalry you got the Chasseur Cheval and Ledoux pushing on the flank here infantry pushing up as well more cavalry pushing in the one disadvantage is this cavalry is getting shot point-blank by these um, Portuguese and the French have to watch out now because the Spanish are pushing on this flank. They even have troops in the tree line, the guard. So Spanish guard is in the tree line. These guys are not going to be easy to push um, on. And yep, you can see the cavalry is falling back. It looks like some Polish Lancers here. So definitely a lot of good cav on both sides. Both sides must have known the other one was going to bring. I mean, maybe there's just... Maybe you get good enough at this mod where you just, if you see certain armies being brought, you know they're going to bring Cav. Or maybe just you know the players, you know what the game, you know what they're going to bring. Now, the French have to make a very critical decision here. There is still only one French, or one UK army here, but the rest are obviously very, very close to reinforcing their position here. Look at that massive of UK, Dutch, Netherlands troops as well as more rolling up here they need to decide if they're going to attack or if they're going to defend here oh wow more cavalry going in here so they're trying to make interference on this LOC they need to hold it guys the whole battle could be won or lost by this LOC if the UK lose this they will lose a portion of this hill because um, if you look at the terrain here this hill is this kind of no one oh, oh, the they lost it oh no they lost it Alright, so now they gotta retreat, but they still have a portion of this hill. Usually if the French have the, control this whole hill, the UK have to, the coalition has to push up here. Oh, we have the Scots Grays going in against the Chasseur Chabot. Unfortunately, they may get flanked here. Oh, they're gonna get flanked. We got the, the Royal Horse charging in as well, though this is turning into a bit of a mess here. Ledoux even gonna go in. Hopefully they have a general nearby. Um, the UK should... Oh, men, oh no, they're losing for... their best cavalry now. Ooh, a nice shot by the Skirm. That's a huge 80-man Skirm unit that is just pouring in fire. Now, unfortunately, they're probably going to get charged here. 
still, they fire and do a lot of damage. And look how many cavalry units they're dropping. Now they're gonna get run over, unfortunately. And now this LC has been taken. Um, the UK are gonna have to make some distance until their reinforcements get here. Already though, this fight is looking way, way more competitive than it did before. We got some Grenadiers clashing with the 85th Bucks Volunteers, some Lightfoot. Um, the rest of the UK probably gonna try to get some flanking fire on them just to try to save their line. These skirmishers somehow are still alive. Um, and pouring in fire on, looks like Russia Sud has some cavalry up here trying to, uh, make some, make some noise on this flank tied down the UK. However, it does look like the French are getting into the UK's lines. We do have the light foot, um, trying to make a stand. Artillery setting up danger close to the French positions. There's more cavalry pouring in. Grenadiers making a charge right into the ninth. Got generals nearby trying to inspire the men. More cavalry probably going to start pursuing up this coordinated infantry and cavalry charge here being made. And man, this fight is just fierce, guys. So fierce. Reinforcements pushing up now. The French are definitely getting in for melee. However, you can see this flanking fire by this UK is actually destroying. Oh, the Scots Greys going in against Grenadiers, stopping them dead in their tracks here. But like I was saying, this flanking fire is just absolutely destroying that French assault. They are pushing up this road and all of these troops here were just shooting. It was a shooting gallery. And uh, the UK managed to save their line against a massive Grenadier unit. And now the flank starts creeping around. Spain, backed by literally the UK Netherlands, is pushing around here. I still haven't seen any heavy um, infantry presence for France. Uh, you see another... This, is, this looks like the Rhine. Yeah, I think this is the nine-point Rhine. They are still making their way over. Man, that's, that's Spain's job right there. That is what Spain has to deal with. Uh, but Spain has a good position. They have the forest... Um, they should be okay. But like I was saying, I mean, there's still two other French armies that have yet to make their appearance. A lot of cavalry, so maybe one of the armies went, like, almost all cav, maybe? Like a cav corps, potentially? After much hard fighting, though, the LOC has been taken by the French, has been held, um, and now it is the UK's move. After throwing back that French counterattack, they can counterattack on their own. Actually, maybe it was the initial attack, so now they're counterattacking, I guess. You know, the one thing that this makes me uh, want to play, I've been watching a lot of miniatures, so deploying up miniatures, um, those games, man, they look like so much fun. The sad thing is, I know I have a community in New Mexico that plays this. No one plays the mini minis, you know, where you paint the miniatures, then you roll dice, you have tape measures, all that. It looks like so much fun. I wish, I wish I had uh, people in my area that would play that game. I would so get into that, and I'd probably stream it and record it, but... I gotta wait until my kids are older, I guess, and then just <laughs> teach them how to play and start my own little community. I didn't have more kids, I guess, huh? Get my own, uh, my own community of war games going. No, I'm just kidding, obviously. Although I do have a lot of brothers. Maybe some of them would be interested at some point in playing it. But, uh, every time I see these, it always reminds me of that. Obviously, it's, you know, a board... You know, a, a map with, you know, models and that sort of thing, but still looks like so much fun. Anyway, back to the battle. Looks like the French have a string of skirms, even artillery set up. I don't know how good of a position this is. I think the hill's just a little bit... Maybe the hill's a little bit in the way. I don't think they actually got a really amazing position, but they have an okay position. Um, the UK are making a quite a significant push. The Portuguese UK is now backed by the Netherlands UK. And they are starting to push forward. They got plenty of infantry in reserve. Their cap is definitely weak, but it is still in the field. It's just going to have to be probably defensive most of the time now. They got to watch out because there's going to be a French army descending on their flank. So it'll be an interesting development. All right, does it look like this uh, attack is starting to uh, develop here. 
as the French are now receiving an attack by some sappers. Oh, look at these guys. Man, you would want to face a bearded sapper, probably super, super massive guy, probably towering over you. Oh, these are Grens, I guess. We got some light infantry as well. We'll see. We'll see how this develops. I think the French may lose this. Um, they are definitely being surrounded here. Artillery set up, though. Ooh. Oh, guard. Imperial guard artillery. Get some canister off on the UK position. Thankfully, Spain is now going to take pressure off the Rhine, although I wouldn't be surprised if the Rhine made a move where they just had a defensive line here and then pushed the majority of the troops over here to try to Sir, deal with this. Our general is under attack. Either way, we may have the Scots Grays. I wonder if they're going to go for that Imperial Guard artillery. Um, this thing's definitely developing into an interesting fight. He's brave Nassau and... Oh! Well, there's no one that can form square there, so France definitely doing, a, doing some work. We also have uh, some Spanish heavies engaging the Scots Greys. Unfortunately, the Scots Greys do break. And now Russia Sud is going to push up on this flank. So the UK, man, they have their work cut out for them. There is no doubt about that. Um, they may have to even reform. They need some reinforcements to start pushing forward here. LLC still being hotly contested. And I wonder if Spain's going to make a move. I'm assuming they're going to. They have their whole force. Our are running, sir. Yeah, they, they have a whole force here. Oh, they took it back. This is like a Waterloo in Portugal. <laughs> Portuguese Waterloo, almost. It's like Kikuma. You fought over it time and time again. Alright, the Rhine actually has forces over here as well, so I'm wondering if they have just a small, small fake force almost, just to hold back Spain, because that's a lot of Spanish troops, and the rest are over here to fight here. Um, if that's the case, then Spain needs to be pushing for sure. I mean, it's an uphill battle, but if they have the numerical advantage, it'll be huge. France is definitely running out of troops by this LOC, and if this falls, all of these artillery positions are jeopardized. And the French center, which is just cabin infantry, will actually be broken. This LOC technically is the center. Oh my gosh. This artillery is brutal. Yeah, France is going to lose this. Spain not pushing still? I really feel like Spain could push here. Like, at least push up some skirmishers or something. I mean, there's not got to be... There's got to be... I mean, if Ryan has troops over here and over here, they probably are got defending this whole side. Which makes you wonder where the 11 and other 9-pointer are. I mean, one of the French armies definitely lost some of their troops, but they, it's impossible. Unless they brought a lot of cap, it's impossible that they actually lost everything. Now, look at this. We got a stone wall here that the UK can use to start just chipping away at this artillery. Maybe time to move their artillery piece. They're getting shot up, I guarantee you. Oh, the canister, though, is definitely going to be brutal here. They're wavering already. But, I mean, all you got to do is shoot him up. You don't have to advance. Yeah, he's going to get his men off the guns there. Um, look, oh, my goodness, Gabe. We got a lot more infantry pushing up here on the right flank. Our men are running, sir. So France is definitely focusing a lot on this flank here. And now the guns have been lost. They're probably going to reform, get their center. It looks like Spain is pushing good. I think they could definitely are going to do very successful pushing here. I would not be too worried as the Spanish. There is, like I said, probably not a lot of French troops, just a lot more cavalry. So you, as long as you have some cap to be defensive or some squares nearby. I'm not seeing a lot of squares to be honest, but they have some squares in the back lines. They can push forward. They got a lot of infantry guys. They got a lot. 
This attack's looking pretty good. This left side is pretty heavy for the French, um, but the UK can spread their troops out and force the French to be more defensive with their advance, or a little more cautious maybe. This attack looks quite good, especially since they drove off one, now both of the French gun positions. Without their artillery, the UK are gonna, or the French are gonna have a tougher time actually making, making a stand here. They need cav and infantry to kind of make this, this battle work. And as I suspected, I do not see a reserve line for this French army. I think I think Spain's about to just crush through this, this French line. There is there is stacks and stacks of reserves over here, but there is nothing but one long line and some cavs. Well, which, not, this is the thing we scoffed at when it comes to cavalry, you know? Like, there is nothing wrong with cav defending your lines. But if the enemy can stay back and just shoot up your lines, cavs will be kind of useless unless you can go on the offensive. Let's look at this, here we go. Ryan is gonna start getting pieced up here. You can see he's shifting over a lot of reserves because this left side, just as I suspected, hey, I was right for once, there wasn't a lot of infantry here. Um, to stop the Spanish. They probably could have advanced a little sooner. However, maybe it was best for them to wait until uh, their ally pushed past the LOC. At this point, this is where things... This could be the losing point for the French. Unless they can make a real good offensive move right now, they are going to start getting just diced up by this UK who can shoot way better. You can see Russia Sud, the seven-pointer, he's just getting massacred. His troops are just dropping so fast. Got some of the best of the UK Portugal firing here. Now they do have reserves, but how long can you keep throwing troops into the meat shield? They have the tow rows over here too. They have some of their best infantry guys. Two tow rows, my goodness. Artillery, man, the UK are just making a very, very well coordinated attack that we do have what looks like a potential assault against Spain. Now, Spain is the one the French should focus down with cavalry, so this could go very well for them. Let's see what happens. All right, so cavalry making an impact. It is Chasseur Cheval, so not very good um, when it comes to, oh my gosh, that was a terrible charge, unfortunately. This will be a good charge. And unfortunately, Scott's Gray is not in a good position to counter this. That's a good charge. That's a very good charge. So definitely he's halting the Spanish. And the French then close in from melee as well. Now this is Grenadiers. Very chunky units. So they're going to need a lot of shock. Especially the general nearby. Over here, France closing in with the UK. And over here, just, yeah, Russia Sud's running out of time. The French have to make a move over here. And that's exactly what they're trying to do. Now you see the Cavs cycling in and out. Um, that's, wow, a, a lot of Spanish that have definitely broken and routed. Um, but still, French are still in this, guys. Still standing strong. The UK, Netherlands sending over reinforcements here. This could actually be disastrous for the the Spanish. They do deploy their reserve line, which has the guard, I believe. Wait, no, there's the guard. Oh, boy. The French are just using that impetuous downhill charge. However, they're about to get a face full of lead. So they're going to try to get themselves out of there. Spain can still reform, guys, and still prove quite difficult for the French. Over here, I mean, France is actually doing quite well. Now on this side, France trying to close in with melee, using some grenadiers from some what's either 11 or 9 France. Fortunately, they're going to probably get shot in the face as they're trying to melee. These guys are just going to flank fire them. However, they still are starting to make a, a counter charge, um, actually pushing back the UK, so not running out of time anymore, doing very well with their resources. 
with their reserve lines. France has now pulled back. I think they were going to hit a bunch of reserve lines from the UK. They don't want to exhaust themselves. Over here, the cavalry is definitely starting to pull back. And, I mean, France did start counterattacking, but they hit the, the reserve line from Spain. Um, and there's only so far you can push before you have to stop. And unfortunately, they are outnumbered three to one on this flank. There's just so much Spanish troops. And uh, the Chasseur Cheval hitting a square, a guard square. Um, looks like here comes the counterattack by the UK. France is very much spent. Their cavalry units that are left are half strength, probably exhausted or at least tired. France is going for the melee here, going against the 73rd. Oh, we even have a Austrian Grenadier unit charging in against the 27th. Artillery set up. The UK still holding this left side. It looks like they did break some of that French French infantry. Oh, wow, that's a huge unit. The thing is, the Russia Sud has very large units, but they're not that good quality. The morale, all that stuff, not very good. But if you use them with an elite force, it can go very well. Um... Wow, Roland Hill trying to charge in to defend his center, which is looking quite weak here. Um, the UK still standing firm, using their artillery to try to focus down this French center. Get some some uh, Dutch, some Netherlands troops engaging here. The UK, oh, they have the Black Watch pushing up. The French are now going to have to make a organized retreat. I mean, the Spanish, just too much Spanish. I mean, they can't do everything against them. They can maybe break one or two of them in a melee, but the rest are just going to shoot them in the flank. And uh, they're doing quite well there. Ooh, the artillery, though. Here on the play, you can see the French just being repelled. The UK hot on their heels. Sir Thomas Graham inspiring his troops to continue the push. They have had to retreat. They they they've been through a lot. They've been through a lot. They were they initially got attacked at the very beginning fight with the LLC. They've had a lot of retreating and attacking to retreat and attack again. The back and forth is just probably got to be exhausting. The attrition has got to be rough. Over here, the UK have made it into this center line. Cavalry charging downhill once again. This is the last attempt of the French to break the Spanish line here. And the cab play definitely... Uh, oh, that's, a good, that's a good charge. I don't know. Spain may actually be hurting after this one. I think they have enough troops to foot this, though. But another unit does break. However, the UK are pushing in hard on the flank. All oh, the Highlanders in this fight. That is not something Ryan wants to fight against. And you can see the center for the French has basically all but broken. And the UK are even going for much of a melee. They're just shredding the, this Russia sud. And in the center, I mean, ooh, look at this. We have a cheeky little charge in the rear. This French unit got forgotten about, so they're up here fighting, trying to keep their center, or technically their flank now. Their center is almost all but gone. What a hard-fought battle, though. I think the, the unfortunate... I think the French would have benefited from less cavalry and more infantry. Um, the only reason I say that is just because... The UK have so many squares and has so much cavalry. However, however, this is me thinking aloud. The cab that the French brought definitely obsoleted any UK cavalry, um, as they were able to sweep all that nice UK cab off the field because they had cab superiority. So I guess, you know, you had to weigh the pros and cons of any any fight here. Now we have Russia said they're they're going in. They're trying to make for a last grand hurrah as their right flank has all but just disappeared, unfortunately.
And now there's just so many exposed gaps in the French line. This is going to become a bit of a tough fight. And the Spanish having taken so many losses. I mean, let me look. The Spanish brought 3389. 33, almost 3400 men. Actually one of the largest armies on the field. Seconded only by the seven point Russia Sud who brought 28, almost 2900 men. That's a lot of Spanish, guys. Here we go, cavalry infantry going in, trying to break up some of the Spanish. I mean, the mass is undeniable. It's too much. And at the very end of the man, the, the Spanish only took 13, 33 for their losses. They didn't even lose half casualties. Almost half, but they didn't lose half. Here we go. It looks like the Russian side just, you know, slowly breaking off as they start mass routing. Um, that battle's all but lost. I think it's going to turn into a victory for the PL clan. And what's left of the French force is mostly cavalry. And at this point, they're probably just going to go for some grand last... Oh, actually, there's no square here. Oh, they got caught by a guard unit. Oh, oh, oh. I thought they were going to get volley point blank. Didn't happen. Form a square. They do form a square. See what I mean about this, Chancellor Chaval? This is an Imperial Guard cavalry unit. And uh, it's still alive. Such a low amount of cavalry. Oh, they found me break. And it's all but gone for them. Um, I'm going to hit the fast forward button. Unless France goes in for a last grand charge, it's be over. Now, um, as always, I'm wondering what went wrong for the French. You know, what went wrong? They had a strong position. I think the huge disadvantage um, for them... It looks like, man, a lot of cavalry here. Charging in from multiple sides here. Oh. The Spanish lost a general, but, you know... At this point, it doesn't truly really matter. But I think that the the problem was the French didn't invest enough into this town. If they held this town, the, the UK could not push on any of the flanks. That artillery position was tearing up the UK position. They abandoned this and abandoned the LOC, I think, too easily. I think they could have thrown some more troops, maybe some cavalry into it still. Maybe not. Obviously, I'm backseat generaling. I wasn't there. Maybe it was too difficult or the pathfinding. You know, it could be a host of reasons. But... Once they lost the LLC, there's no doubt that once they lost this, um, then the artillery position that was so devastating fell, and then the UK just pushed in on a weak, weak center. And then, of course, um, the Spanish pushing on this very weak flank that was, you know, supposed to just probably be a ruse, and they probably, I'm assuming the French were going to try to push on the other flank against the UK, and that one didn't work out too well either. Um, this one is from one of the Dutch... <clears throat> one of the UK Netherlands, excuse me. Um, and you can see some really good kills here with the Toros. Man, they're, they're really good units, you know. You can't you can't uh you can't discredit that. Um let's pull up the results here. So you see we have Pan as one of the UK Netherlands. Uh 1511 for the kills. You see only took he took half 50% casualties. You have Marshall 904, LOL 753, biggest army on the field by far. Uh, you have Argens, 1374. On the other side, the 11 point France, T.T. Ross, 826. Standards of the 9, France Flanders, 792. Jackal as the 7, Russia Sud, was 660. And then Cortez, uh, 9 point France Rhine, with 1254, most kills on his team. And uh, Pan with the most kills on his team. Uh, like I said, though, a victory for the PL clan. Uh, hard fought, though, definitely. Both sides got some good kills, some excellent charges. I loved the fight for the LOC in the beginning. That was fierce and bloody and very... De you, it felt like a desperate fight for the LOC, at least in the beginning. Both sides did not want to give it up, and I love it when neither side backs down. Both sides commit to it, 
and both sides don't back. I mean, eventually, you know, the French did take it after fierce fighting just to lose it again. But I love it. It's awesome. Uh, anyway, guys, that'll be it for me today. Thank you all so much for joining me. I thank you once again for the support uh, that you guys give this channel. Um, at this point, I don't really have any goals for like subscribers and all that. I just, I just do this for fun, and I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, all the support you guys give, whether it's subscribing if you're new, commenting, liking the video, just watching, it, it is greatly appreciated. Um, and uh, this channel would not be possible without you guys. Otherwise, you know, I probably would have quit a long time ago if I didn't have anybody watching because at that point, what's the point? <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay safe and I'll catch you all in another video.